Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to User One Productions. My name is David, and welcome to the very first tutorial in how to make a Slenderman clone inside of Unity. This is going to be a mini series of between 8 and 12 videos on how to make a Slenderman clone. And as usual, my friends, in the description down below, you will find my Google Drive where I put all my assets, including from this tutorial and any other video on the channel that includes models, scripts, sound effects, etc. Everything is put on there for you guys to download and use, adapt to your needs, and to learn. Before diving into today's video, I do want to thank you guys for almost 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's absolutely amazing. Our Discord, which is also linked in the description if you would like to join. We have plenty of game developers in there that are always willing to help. Uh, we just surpassed 400 members, so I do appreciate that very much. Thank you all. And of course, if you do enjoy today's video, please want to drop me a like and subscribe. It really helps out me as a YouTuber, and it motivates me to produce more videos for you guys. All right, without further ado, let's hop into today's tutorial, which is going to be setting up the player for our Slender Man clone. So here we are in a blank scene inside of Unity. This is probably what it's gonna look like when you open it. What I'm gonna do is, here's the folder you guys can download. Every single one is gonna be on the Google Drive. Today we're gonna be downloading the Slender's Tutorial underscore one for part one of the series, obviously. And inside prototype assets, you will see a test scene. Just click and drag that right into your hierarchy. And what we're going to want to do is right click, go prefab and unpack so we can actually go inside and delete the camera that comes with it because we will not be needing that. This is just a very basic little scene I've whipped up inside of Blender. Uh, very good to use for prototyping, uh, jumping heights, slopes and stair climbing and just anything else you would like to add inside. It also comes packed with a bunch of different grids and colors to suit your needs um, for what you are doing. All right, so now what we're going to do, let's collapse the test scene because we don't need that right now. We're going to delete the main camera because we won't be using that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go game object 3D and create a capsule. And we're going to call this player. Let's actually just bring him up and center him inside of the scene. And let's actually scale the scene so that way player is not too big or too small for it. Right about there looks right. And what we actually need to do is actually open the test scene assets again and click on the plane and everything else but the lamp and add a component of mesh collider so that way our player will not fall through. All right, so now that we have our player, which is just a little capsule for now, let's ensure he's not clipping through the ground or else as soon as you start the game he's going to fall. So let's just bring him up so he's a little bit floating over the floor. And now what we want to do is we want to go to tag and tag him as the player. We're going to right click on him and create a camera. I'm going to change my field of view to 80 because I feel like that's a very modern FOV for most modern video games. And I'm going to change clipping planes to 0 0.01. And now you'll notice the camera starts in the center of the player, which is something we don't want. We actually want to click and drag that up a little bit. So it's actually above the capsule like this. And this is what we'll be using for the player for now. Uh, to actually get him moving, we need to go over the player movement script. So again, from the folder you guys downloaded, let's go into the scripts and let's check out Slender Player Controller. And let's just go over it real fast. This is very bare bones for a player movement script. Um, it can be adjusted to your needs. So let's go over it real quick. Uh, at the very top, we have required component of character controller. So even if your player does not have it added, it will automatically add it upon adding the script to him. We have four floats for walk speed, run speed, jump power, and gravity. Uh, I have the jump power set to zero just because in Slenderman you cannot jump, but it is there as an option for you guys. Next, we have our camera settings, which is our look speed and how far up or down we want to be able to look because obviously we don't want to look straight up or even behind the player or straight down or behind the player again. So I limit it to 75. I found this is a pretty good number to be using. We have a vector 3 to decide which direction we're looking and whichever direction that is is the movement as to where our player is going to be going. Down in the camera zoom settings inside of Slender, if you guys remember, if you hold right click, you can actually zoom in and out with the camera. So in here we have four variables. We have a zoom FOV, which I've set to 35. 35 is pretty good, going from an 80 FOV down to a 35. 
we have our initial FOV, which in my case is 80. We'll be setting that up inside the editor in a second here. And then the zoom smooth. And all this is going to do is make sure our camera zooms in smoothly and doesn't just snap to that position. And then we just have a private bool saying if it's zoomed or not. Down here, can the player move? We have a private bool saying he can move, and that is through the character controller that is going to be added to the player. The only sound effect we have here is an audio source, which is going to be our camera zoom sound. All right, let's go into our start function. Right here, we're saying our character controller, which is referenced here, is going to get the component from which the object the script is attached to. It's going to grab the character controller uh, component. Down here, we have the hide and lock cursor, so it locks to the center, and it does not appear because we'll be creating a crosshair later on. I'm not going to bore you guys with all this other script stuff here, so let's go over a quick summary. This is pretty much walking and running, so if we are not running, just play the normal walk speed, and if we're running, play the run speed variable. Jumping is just going to grab our jump button, which is going to be space. It's going to change our direction on the Y, which is up and down, to jump power. So if it's a five power, it's going to make him go up five steps. And then we say if the player controller is not grounded, that's what this little exclamation mark means. It means it's not. So if it's not grounded, our move direction minus equals gravity, which pretty much means it's going to fall at the speed of what we set gravity to, minusing from the direction on the y, so down. And then we multiply that by time.delta time, or else Unity will just rely on frames instead of real time. Right here, if we can move, right here is our camera movement in action. So as we move the camera, we want the actual player to move with it, so that way we're always looking forward. And these last couple lines down here is just zooming in action. So pretty much if we press down fire 2, which is your right click on the mouse, is zoomed equals true, and we play the camera sound. And if we let go of that button, so now our right mouse button is up, zoom is false, and then we play the same exact sound effect because that's how it's done in the original Slender. And then right here, if it's zoomed, we change our FOV to the zoom FOV, and if we're not zoomed, else if we're not zoomed, we change the camera back to the initial FOV. So what we're actually going to do is click and drag that script onto our player, and let's check inside. As you can see, the character controller gets added. We have player camera right here, which we want to click and drag in. I'm not going to mess with any other variables except initial FOV, which I had at 80. Again, if you're curious as to what this initial FOV is, check your camera, and right here, fill the view, which is mine. Let's go back to our player. We have one more component, which is camera zoom sound, which we don't have set up yet. So what we're going to do is right click on our player, create an empty, and I'm just going to name this sounds. And this is where I will be storing all the sound effects for the game. Inside of sound, let's right click and create an empty, and we're going to call this camera zoom sound like that. Going back to that first folder you guys downloaded for the Slender tutorial series, let's go into the sounds and camera zoom. We're just going to click and drag that onto the empty game object we just created. We want to make sure play on wake is off, so that way when you start the game it doesn't start playing the sound. The sound will only play according to when you right click from this script. So now let's click and drag camera zoom sound right there on the player controller. And what I'm going to do now is maximize on play and press play and make sure everything's working accordingly. So as you can see, we can look around, up, down. This is my furthest down. This is my furthest up. And as you can see, we actually see this capsule we created, which we're going to actually get rid of that in a second here. But we can walk around. We can hold shift and we can run. We can hold right click and it zooms in. We can let go and it zooms back out with our sound effects playing. To eliminate this capsule thing, we don't want to get rid of it because that's our player. So instead, let's go to the player, which is the capsule, and do mesh renderer and turn that off. And now he's invisible with the collider still there accordingly. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is actually adding a flashlight to the player because in Slender, everybody knows you have a flashlight. Let's collapse sounds for right now. I'm going to change the directional light 
to something a little less, like 0.35, so that way the scene is darker. And I'm going into the player, camera, right click, and we're going to add a light, and it's going to be a spotlight. I'm going to call this flashlight. Let's open up the game view a little bit so we can actually see what we're looking at. We're going to change the range to, let's do 45. Spotlight angle, I'm also going to change that to 45. And now when we play the game, we're going to have this light that follows us around like this. And it's kind of small, so what I'm actually going to do is change that spotlight angle up a little bit to maybe 60. Let's play and test that out, and that looks much better for a flashlight. Now what we need to do is actually make the flashlight be able to turn on and off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my player and we're going to add another script to him called flashlight. Again, you can find this script inside the folder that I provided for you guys. Click and drag that onto your player and let's actually open it to see how this works. Very short script. Let's see what's going on in here. We have five variables, which is a game object for the flashlight two audio sources, which is on and off, and then two bools to say whether they're on or off. Which, in all honesty, I'm going to change this script right now. When you guys download it, the script will already be changed. I'm going to change these to private variables, because we don't need to see these inside the editor. It's only to ensure the script works properly. And what I actually have here are a turn on and turn off sound effect. Uh, I'm going to have the same sound effect play for on and off. So in reality, I could get rid of one of these variables and just have a sound effect. Um, just because that's how the original Slender game did it. Uh, in this instance, I'm going to leave both just in case you guys want a turn on and a turn off sound effect. So void start. Off the rip, I have off set to true and flashlight set active false. So pretty much this is saying our flashlight is off. So deactivate the light object. All right. So if the flashlight is off and we press down our flashlight button, which we're going to set up in a second here. The light source gets turned on, we play the sound effect, and then we say off is false and on is true. Else if, meaning otherwise, if it's on, and then we press down that flashlight button again, the light source gets turned off, the sound effect plays accordingly, off is true, on is false. Very simple. So since we had this flashlight button right here, uh, notice it's all lowercase, it's going to be referencing a button called flashlight typed exactly like this. So what you want to do is go edit, project settings. And initially you're going to start with 18. You could change this to whatever number you want. I change it to 25. And then you'll notice that the bottom one just gets duplicated a ton of times. Click on one of those, change the name to flashlight, exactly how it's typed in the script. And inside positive button, you can change this to whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to use F. Uh, you can literally put this to anything you want for a flashlight button, but F is what I'm going with. Now that button is set up, we can go to our player, find our flashlight object, which is that light, and we have two sound effects. So we're going to go back into our sounds right here. What I'll do is just duplicate the camera zoom sound effect and rename it to flashlight. Go into our sounds folder from the first tutorial folder, and flashlight goes into the audio clip. Go back to our player. On and off sound is going to be the same thing, so I will just click and drag those sound effects into here, close it all up, press play, and as you can see it starts off, press F, perfect. And we could do that as many times as we want, our zoom still works, everything's working perfectly, and it's starting to feel like a Slenderman clone in a way. Alright, so let's go back into our player, right click on him, go UI, Canvas wherever that is, right here. And I'm just gonna call this HUD for now. Inside the HUD, I'm going to create UI raw image. And this is going to be our crosshair. Let's go into our crosshair and find a texture. Uh, it should have come automatically with Unity, it's just called a knob. We're gonna click that into there, and as you can see, it pops up in the center of our screen. It is a little big, so I'm going to change the width to something like 30 and the height to 30. Also, something I forgot to mention is inside of our HUD, which is the canvas we created, we want to go to Canvas Scaler and change that to Scale with Screen and do something kind of native, like 1920 by 1080. So that way, depending on what size screen you guys are playing on, it can adjust those UI components accordingly. 
And with that, we have our crosshair set up and our main HUD canvas, which we'll be using in later tutorials for pause menus, death counters, and page counters. What you can do to make this a little more custom because it's a white dot, you can actually change the color of it to whatever you want, as you can see there. I'm just gonna leave it as white for tutorial sake. We can close up the HUD. And now what we're gonna do is create what I like to call the reach tool, which is going to be a tool we use to figure out if our player is in range and if he's looking at a page or whatever we want to pick up or use. It is very basic and very easy to use, especially for newer users. All it is, is what we're going to do is right click our player. Actually, I lied. We're going to right click on the camera attached to the player and we're going to go 3D cube. A cube is going to be placed right in front of our player. Copy my settings exactly. We're going to do 0.15 on the scale of X, 0.15 on the Y. And I'm going to do 2.75 for a length. And all we want to do is make sure we drag it out right in front of our camera like this. We want to turn mesh renderer off so we don't see it. We want to make sure on its box collider it is a trigger. And to ensure we don't collide with anything and that it works properly, we want to add a rigid body to it. To make sure the rigid body doesn't fall down, we want to freeze its position and freeze its rotation. And now we just need to tag it as a reach. We want to call it reach so that way our scripts know what object we're talking about. And actually, I'm going to rename this to reach tool. If you guys don't know how to create a new tag, you go into your tags, add a tag, and then right there at the plus and call it reach with a capital R. So now if we actually turn the mesh, uh, mesh renderer back on, I can actually show you it in real time what it's doing. As you can see, if I'm looking at the ground right here, it's going to be able to pick something up right there. If I'm looking away, it's not going to be touching that specific object. And all it does is just follow our camera around like so. And as you can see, our crosshair is working properly. Oh, wrong button. Clicked inside the scene editor. But uh, there we go. Flashlight is working. And as you can see, it actually casts a uh, shadow on it, which we don't want. But if we turn mesh render off, it no longer has a shadow on it. And that's going to be pretty much it for today's tutorial, my friends. That is how you set up the player for our Slenderman clone. In the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to pick up pages and how to get that all set up and working. With that being said, my friends, like I said before, this Slender Tutorial 1 folder can be found on my Google Drive, which is linked in the description down below. It will be inside of a Slenderman clone folder. All you gotta do is download and import it into your Unity project, and you will have everything I have done in today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please remember to drop me a like and subscribe, and I will catch you all in the next one. This is User1 Productions, signing off for now. Peace.